program on who polluted the Brandywine River. Now, as you may or may not know, uh, the Brandywine River is the river that runs through the middle of Greenfield. And if you ever have been to Riley Park, that's the river that goes right through Riley Park. So today we're going to be talking about um, some typical pollution that occurs uh, in our community and, you know, the things that we can do to prevent that. Um, so first of all, what is pollution? So pollution um, is anything that contaminates our air, our earth, anything that's not supposed to be there that we don't find in nature that makes a mess of our community. So basically there's three types of pollution. There's air pollution, there's water pollution, and just land pollution. Any you know litter that you find out on the ground. Um, air pollution is anything that contaminates our air, uh, the air that we breathe. And water pollution is anything that we find in our rivers, or our lakes, or oceans that really shouldn't be there. P trash or um, plastic or anything like that that really shouldn't be there. So today we're going to take a trip um, down through Greenfield and just see what kind of pollution happens on a maybe a daily basis. Who knows? Um, so I have a sample of water here. Um, this is fresh, clean water. Um, it actually came out of my kitchen sink, but um, this is to represent our rivers. And I put a few uh, rocks in here, and I've got my my pet turtle right here to uh, to entertain us. Um, but this is clean water. So this is fresh, clean water. Um, if I hadn't put the rocks in there, uh, this would have been fine for drinking. Uh, if it were large enough, you could swim in it. Um, you know, it, it's good, clean water, basically. So we're going to read this story now on uh, our little trip that we take through Greenfield. 500 years ago, early explorers hunted and fished along creeks, lakes, and streams in this area. They noticed an abundance of wildlife such as foxes, groundhogs, porcupines, deer, beaver, raccoon, and squirrels. They were able to catch plenty of fish to eat in the rivers and streams. The water looked so clean and clear. Do you think they drank it? Probably. Did they wash their clothes in it? I'm sure of it. Did they cook with it? Definitely. Did they take a bath in it? Yeah, I'm sure they did. But why was this water so clean? You know, if they did all those things, how did it stay clean? Well, over the years, the land has developed to include all things that we see in Greenfield today. The wide open plains and forests have given way to construction sites to make rooms for homes and accommodate the growth in population. When preparing to build, construction workers clear the land of trees and bushes and grade the soil to prepare it for building. Sometimes on windy days, the soil gets blown around and possibly ends up in the river. Also, trees are removed along the riverbank, and then the soil erodes and washes down into the river, since there are no roots to hold the soil back. Businesses were built to provide us with all the services we need to make our lives more comfortable and convenient. Greenfield is now a hustling, bustling town and a great place to live and raise a family. All right, so we are gonna add some construction waste. Um, so this would be the dirt that washes down into the river. And you don't really think of, be, of dirt being a contaminant, um, but that dirt can build up in lower levels of the river and it could make the river too shallow so the fish can't swim through. Um, it could also wash down and cover up fish eggs and then they can't produce additional fish. So um, kids always like to ask what I'm actually putting in the water. And I usually do put dirt in here, but today I'm using hot cocoa mix. So I'm gonna pour a little bit of hot cocoa mix in here. And I'm gonna stir this up a little bit. Because hot cocoa mix doesn't dissolve very well. Okay, ooh, my water's already getting dirty. Okay. Greenfield also has several very nice parks and trails. The streams and creeks around look very nice and clean. As you look around, you never know that there are various forms of pollution occurring right here, right now, in every stream, creek, and ditch. So, 
As I'm driving towards Riley Park, I see Mr. Green is working in his fields. He owns a farm out past the interstate and has been a farmer all his life. I watch as he sprays fertilizer on his fields so his crops will grow better. Extra fertilizer washes off his fields when it rains and ends up running down to the river. So we are going to add a little bit of fertilizer. And this is actually green jello. So lime jello. So we're going to add a little bit of fertilizer. And we're going to mix that up real good. His cows graze in his fields, happily munching on grass. He has been so busy in his fields that he has not had a chance to repair the barnyard fence by the river. And the cows are cooling off by standing in the river. It crosses my mind that the cows are depositing lots of manure in the river and in the field every day. Hmm, that's not so good. So we're going to add Hershey Kisses. And those are going to represent our manure. As I get into town, I notice Mr. Smith is washing his car in his driveway just downstream from the park. I waved to him and he waved back. But I watched as the soapy dirt and grime rinse off his car and washed down to the storm drain in the street at the bottom of his driveway. The storm drain leads right into the river and I noticed soap suds are floating on top of the river at the base of the storm drain. And that can't be good. So we're going to add some soapy water to our river. And this is actually soap and water. Mr. and Mrs. Sanders are homeowners that live in the subdivision behind the park. The river runs near their backyard and they love to take their grandchildren down to the river to fish, swim, and catch crawdads during the summer. They are sitting on their porch enjoying the weather. What they don't know is that a sewer line is leaking raw sewage right behind their house. But how would they know this? So we're going to add a little lemonade to our uh, water. Sewage, if you're not familiar with what that is, um, is the liquid that comes from your toilet. So that's not so good. Mr. and Mrs. Hall have been busy working in their garden. The gardeners have spent hours planting and weeding their garden and it is full of yummy vegetables that they sell at the local farmers market. They have had some trouble with insects, so they spray the garden with pesticides, which is a bug killer. I'm not a big fan of bugs, so I can certainly identify with them not wanting to lose their crops to insects. Here again, when it rains, excess pesticides are washed away and run down to the river. So we're going to add a little red Kool-Aid for our pesticides. And we're going to stir this up again. I notice the Benson family is busy cleaning out their garage. I briefly stop to chat with them and I notice that they have set aside some old rusty cans filled with several types of chemicals. One in particular has no label and contains a mysterious liquid. They aren't sure what it is, but the rusty can looks dangerous so they don't want to keep it in their garage any longer. We need to get rid of it, said Mrs. Benson. Her son, Billy, walks over to the side of the driveway and dumps it into the grass. The red liquid creeps downhill into the drainage ditch and heads right for the river. I don't have a good feeling about that, but I don't want to say anything. They're nice people and I don't want to hurt their feelings. So we're going to add some mysterious liquid. And I think this is also red Kool-Aid. A lady and her son are walking a small dog nearby. The dog uses the bathroom in the grass by the riverbank. The lady is chasing after her son and does not stop to pick up the doggy doo. I have noticed doggy doo bag stations at several places along the trail, but she must have missed them. I'm a little disgusted, but I don't pick it up. It's not my dog. So we have some more hot cocoa that we're going to add as our pet waste. I see a large family reunion at one of the shelters. The families are picnicking at the tables and on blankets scattered all around. 
everyone is smiling and laughing and having a good time and they haven't even noticed that their storm clouds are moving in. It starts to rain and everyone takes cover. One family is in a hurry to get to their car and leaves some trash and garbage behind. As the wind picks up, the trash swirls around and lands in the river. So we have some litter and this is actually litter. The family runs to their car and as they pull away, I notice a large puddle of green antifreeze that has pooled where their car was parked. The rain hits the puddle and carries the liquid into a nearby ditch that feeds to the river. They probably don't even realize that their car is leaking fluids, but they need to take care of it. So this is also a uh, green Kool-Aid. And we're gonna stir this up again. Wow, my river is not looking so good right now. I put up my umbrella and head back towards my car. The trees are swaying and the leaves are blowing all over the place. Some of them are blowing into the river. What kind of problems will that cause? As I leave the park, I notice a smoky haze floating in the air above the local factory. The smokestacks are puffing clouds of smoke into the air and it's hazy above and around the plant. This can't be good. I hear thunder rumbling in the distance and it's starting to rain even harder. I wonder what happens to those gases when the rain knocks them down to the earth. What is that called? Um, does it affect the fish and the wildlife that use the river? I turn and head back hoping to beat the rain. So uh, yeah, all that air pollution, if once it uh, uh, is confronted by rain, that ended up washing down to the earth and it ends up in our river. So yeah, all that air pollution ends up turning into water pollution. So we're gonna add some industrial pollution and this is actually soy sauce. So we're gonna add some of that. To the north, there are several businesses that sit near the river as well. As I pass, I notice that a small area of oily residue is sitting on top of the water. I wonder if anyone knows about this. Is it coming from the factory or did somebody dump something in the river? Could this be a problem? Whom should I call? Hmm. As I drive back home, I watch the rain coming down and I think about how pretty the park is and what a nice drive I had. As I'm reminded about how lucky I am to live near a city that has such a clean river. But then I think about all the things that I saw that affected the river and I wonder, how clean is this water really? Would you drink it? Would you cook with it? So who polluted the Brandywine River? So we're gonna go back through this um, and talk about each of the pollutants that uh, happened here. Uh, now, can we clean up this river once that it's dirty like this? Is there anything that we can do? Sure, there's some things we can do and I have some tools over here that will help us figure out what we can do to clean it. So first of all, I'm gonna use a strainer and I'm gonna strain out the trash. Well, it looks like most of the trash has floated to the bottom of my tank already. So I only have a couple pieces of trash that I picked up, but we did get a few pieces of trash. So yes, you can pick up the trash that ends up in the river and that's an easy thing that we can do. We can have river cleanup days where we can walk along the riverbanks and pick up any trash that we see. So that's something easy that we can do to clean up our rivers. We also have the cow manure that we dumped in here, which is uh, on the bottom. And if I can find one, uh, I can grab some cow manure out with my tongs. So I was able to get a piece of cow manure and we're gonna just put that down here on the side. So I can use that as long as it's not mushy, but um, my cow manure is, uh, is hard, so <laughs> we're good. Now, the rest of it uh, is liquids that I added to the water. So it was the Kool-Aid, the hot chocolate, um, the soy sauce, and once you mix those liquids with water, it is really difficult to separate those back out. But we're gonna try. I've got a clear cup here and I have a coffee filter, and I'm just gonna hold this coffee filter over the top of the cup, and maybe 
by pouring our water through the coffee filter, maybe that will make it clean again. So we're gonna try this. Okay, and I don't know if you can tell or not, but um, the water is maybe a little bit cleaner and maybe that's just because we don't have as much of it in front of us, but it really didn't take the water back to the clean water that we had originally. So that's a good idea, but unfortunately that didn't work. All right, um, I've got a sponge here, but I don't know anything that can do except for maybe clean my fish tank once I'm done. So um, as you can see, it's very, very difficult to clean a dirty river. Once it's polluted, it's almost impossible to get it back to a normal clean river again. So um, one of the things that we can do instead of trying to clean up a dirty river is we can try to prevent it from happening in the first place. So some of the things that we could do, um, the construction sites, we can put up a construction fence along our river bank and that will help prevent the dirt from washing down into the river. The uh, fertilizer that we spread on our fields, uh, one thing we can do about that is make sure we don't spread too much because the excess fertilizer can't get absorbed by the plants and ends up washing into the rivers. And you know, we use fertilizer on our home plants and flowers and gardens as well as our big farm fields. So you know, maybe you can encourage your parents to read the directions on the fertilizer container and use exactly what they recommend so we don't use too much. Um, Washing the car. Yeah, everybody likes to wash their car and it does save money to wash it at home, but you know, you don't think about the soap being a contaminant, but it is. So it's better to take your car to a car wash facility where they can wash it for you and all that soap is contained and it's released properly and not just runs down to our river. All right, so the homeowners that had uh, the leaky sewage line, um, it's good to check you know, your house on a regular basis and make sure you don't have any leaks that are occurring. And uh, if you do find a leak somewhere, get it fixed right away so that it doesn't cause any further problems. So the gardeners with their um, pesticides, the here again, just like the fertilizer, you just wanna make sure that you don't use too much. So the pesticides are used to get rid of the bugs that attack our plants and our, our fruits. So just use what's recommended and uh, then you shouldn't have a problem. The mysterious liquid that Billy poured out in the grass alongside of his driveway, you should never pour any mysterious liquids out into the grass, into a storm drain, uh, down your sink, anywhere out in public. Uh, mysterious liquids, um, these could be chemicals you find in your garage. They could be household cleaning chemicals and those are very hazardous to our environment. They can hurt our plants, they can hurt our grass, um, they can hurt animals that may come in contact with it, or they can leak down into our water and hurt us as well. So you never wanna pour chemicals out onto the ground. Um, Hancock County has two collection events every year, and we collect hazardous waste at those collection events. So if you have those items in your garage or in your house, that you want to get rid of. Uh, you can first find some place that maybe would like to take it to donate it to, like a church or um, some other place like that, a nonprofit organization that maybe has to buy those chemicals at a very expensive price. Maybe they could use them. If they're not interested in it, then you need to bring them to us at our collection event and we will make sure that they are disposed of properly. When you're taking your dog for a walk, it's important to take with you uh, cleanup bags uh, because your dog is going to need to do their business and we need to take care of that because here again um, that um, residue ends up washing down into our water or into our river and that's not so good. So we need to pick it up and dispose of that properly. So what about the people having the picnic? I mean it's unfortunate that it started raining and they had to leave in a hurry um, but they needed to make sure that they picked up all their trash before they left because wind usually comes along with a storm and uh, even if it wasn't raining that wind would pick up that trash and
take it right to our river. So it's very important that we pick up any trash that we have, you know, if we're out on a picnic or, you know, just that we see laying around. Pick it up so it doesn't end up where it doesn't belong. Uh, the car with the antifreeze leaking out. Uh, you should do regular car maintenance checks and uh, I think usually homeowners know if their car is leaking fluids because wherever they park at their house, they're going to see that residue at their house as soon as they pull their car out of the driveway. So um, I think most people would catch that pretty quickly and uh, but it does tend to be a problem you know and especially if you're in a hurry to go to the store and you don't have time to fix your car right then and there or maybe you can't take it to a car uh, repair place to get it fixed right away so it may sit for a while and yes those fluids will end up collecting in your driveway and will leak down to the water supply so it's important to take care of those leaks very quickly and get those taken care of uh, the smokestacks uh, the air pollution we have an organization called IDEM. It's called Indiana Department of Environmental Management, and they are responsible for making sure people are not polluting the environment. So they are, have regular checks on businesses to make sure that they're not releasing uh, toxic fumes into the air. Um, they also regulate any liquids that are released from the factory uh, to make sure that they're not releasing anything hazardous. So IDEM does a really good job of trying to uh, protect us from our businesses and other organizations that may be doing things that they shouldn't be doing. So closing this program, we have some natural bioindicators in our community that can help us determine whether our environment is clean and healthy. And uh, many amphibians, such as frogs, are good bioindicators. So if we are down at the riverbank and we notice that there are some frogs that aren't growing just quite right, um, that means that there's something in that water that they're getting exposed to that uh, we probably need to address and make sure we get that taken care of. Um, so that happens pretty quickly. Those frogs uh, mutate pretty quickly. So um, that's a quick thing that we can do to look to catch a problem before it gets out of hand. By using frogs, we can use them to help us determine whether or not our lakes and rivers are being treated the way they needed to be treated. So I hope you've enjoyed this program and I hope you've learned a little bit of something about water pollution and um, the things that happen on a daily basis. And if you see some pollution occurring, you know, maybe you could tactfully let the person know that they're doing something wrong or you know, just take actions to correct whatever the problem is and make sure that it doesn't continue to happen in the future. Have a good day.